What would be acceptable to society for wise investments to have been made by age 30? So that you can really properly take care of yourself and your family. Somehow we've missed those standards, right? Shouldn't it be popular to be wealthy by age 40? And shouldn't we look at somebody who by age 45 is not at least financially independent saying, where have you been, uh, Tibet? Or, uh, Bangladesh, you probably have spent. You mean you've been here all this time? Right? Shouldn't we make it a bit unacceptable not to be well off in what we call reasonable time? But what if a guy spent his potential fortune on non-essentials from age 15 to age 45? Shouldn't we call that unacceptable? Shouldn't teenagers ask their parents, how come we're not rich? We live in a rich country. This is America. Aren't those good questions? How about the wisdom of a good plan versus a poor plan? What if a man was a farmer and he ate his seed corn. Instead of planting it, he ate it. Wouldn't we make arrangements to go get his children? And say, the kids aren't safe. The man's insane. He eats his seed corn. He doesn't plant it. Wow. I just offer that as kind of an interesting question. If we make such pressure demands for fourth grade, why shouldn't we make those same pressure demands for the rest of life? Interesting question, right? Good debatable question. Now, part of it is we simply society eases back on us as far as ongoing demand of results. But here's what I'd ask you to do. Make the demands on yourself. I'm asking you not to let yourself off the hook. Society will let you get by with far less than you want to be. When you get out of university, how many books will the community demand that you read every month? Approximately. About none. So if you're going to do the extra reading, guess what? You've got to develop that philosophy and put that pressure on yourself. But what I'm asking you to do is take a good look at results. Now, another reason why we look at results, results at age 25, results at age 30 on a wide variety of things, health and wealth and culture and and sophistication and lifestyle and uniqueness. We keep checking all those results. Here's why. To see if there's any errors in activity. Guess how easy it is to make errors in activity. It's easy. We teach in our leadership series, don't mistake movement for achievement. Boy, sometimes it's easy to be faked out by being busy. Guy's busy 10 hours a day, but he's going in figure eights. The guy's not making progress. He's stalled, but he's busy. And he thinks being busy is going to do it. Say, no, you got to be busy doing the right things. So maybe you need activity fixed. Maybe you need attitude fixed. Who knows? The guy who says, since they don't pay well, I come late and leave early. We say, John, that's going to affect you all your life. And you've probably got the results to show it. Or maybe we need a correction of philosophy. That's why we check results. Economics is major. Everybody should major in economics because it's such a vital part of your life. A paycheck is so vital because, first of all, it provides for you and the family's survival. Second, it provides for the opportunity of success. Some people feel we shouldn't spend that much time talking about money, but we really should. Someone says, well, you know, money is the root of all evil. Not true. Here's what it really says. The love of money is the root of all evil. And I'm sure everyone here has dispensed with the idea of falling in love with money because that serves no purpose. Here's what's noble, what money can do. The projects it can support. The relief from debt it can create. Building a financial wall around your family nothing can get through. So economics is major. The key, of course, is what you do with it. If you earn a lot, you should give a lot. Key phrase from antiquity. Here's what it says. If you've been given much, now much is required. 
If you've been given great responsibility, much is required. If you've been given much wealth, now much is required. Everyone has to solve this about the money to go for. Should you go for the money? Should you go for success? And here's the philosophy we've already covered. You should earn as much as you possibly can in the reasonable time devoted to economics, job, business. Reasonable time devoted to economics, job, business, future, enterprise. With that enterprise and with that job, the key is to earn as much as you possibly can as you balance your life with everything else. Not at the sacrifice of your friendships, not at the sacrifice of values, not at the sacrifice of integrity. This should be everyone's goal to someday be able to live from the income of your personal resources. Now, how many resources you need, right, depends on how you want to live. But if you wish to live modestly, it doesn't take all that many resources over a fairly brief period of time to have enough resources to live modestly. If you wish to live more lavishly, of course, you need to accumulate more resources. But that's my view of financial independence, so that you can live from the income of your resources. Now, here's what else that does. Now you can choose the work you do. Now you can choose to work or not work. Now you can work not because you have to, but because you want to. When we talk to kids about financial independence, we say, do what you have to as quick as you can so you can do what you want to as long as you can. Your financial journey begins with what you do with the first dollar. It's where it begins. Now, sure, you can do the wrong things and finally correct that, get on a better path, but it all begins on what you do with your resources. Jot this phrase down. It's one of the best for the weekend. Here's the two challenges of life. Number one, the development of our full potential. That's challenge number one. Challenge number two is the wise use of all our resources. That sums up life in general. The development of all of our potential and the wise use of all our resources. And let me share with you now a little plan. Because when I met Shof, and he asked me about my financial condition, he said, how much money have you saved and invested the last six years? And I said, zero. He said, not a good number. Here's what I told him. If I had more money, I'd have a better plan. Now, jot this down, because here's what he said. If you had a better plan, you would have more money. Next key phrase, it's not the amount that counts, it's the plan that counts. Now, you've got to have some plan what to do with your dollar. I've developed this little plan simply for suggestion, and then you've got to do the rest to revise it and do whatever you want to with it. But here's what I teach. Never spend more than 70 cents. You've got to pick something some number, this is the best one I could figure out. Now we've got another 10 cents, and another 10 cents, and another 10 cents, which is the 30 plus the 70, which is the full dollar. So we spend nothing more than 70 cents. Now what do we do with the other 30? Here's some of the most important information. 10 cents is for charity, or for church or whatever worthy projects you think you might engage in. Here's one of the best things to teach kids, generosity. Because first we're going to teach abundance, to provide more than you could use for yourself. It means to produce more than you need, so you have more than necessity, you have some to share. Some churches teach a 10%, a tithe, they call it, which is fine. The key is to either administer this 10 cents yourself or to give it to some institution, a church or whatever, and let them spread it around. Let them put it where it's needed. Now, if you're going to give to some charity or church, you, you, you must let them take you on the tour and show you where it goes. Okay, if you part with the money... Let them give you the tour. Here's where the 10% goes if you're going to tie. Because now that gives you great joy to give 10%. Because you say, hey, here's what it's doing. Here's what it's doing. Here's where it's going. Here's who gets it.
Okay. Now the next 10 cents is called the use of capital. Here's what capital and capitalism is. So jot this down. Capital is any value you set aside to be invested in an enterprise that brings value to the marketplace, hoping to make a profit. That's what capital and capitalism is. I can say it in one sentence. Capital is any value you set aside to be invested in an enterprise that brings value to the marketplace, hoping to make a profit. Now, the capital is the value you set aside. Taking capital and investing it in an enterprise and bringing the value to the marketplace we call capitalism. Capital and capitalism. It is so simple that to mess it up with some weirdo kind of philosophy is a disgrace. Now, who can understand this? First of all, the farmers understand it. Here's what seed corn is. It's capital. It's seed corn means the seed that you set aside to be planted in the ground, take care of in the summer, hoping to have a profit and a harvest in the fall. So the farmer sets aside his seed corn. Question, would he let his family eat it? No, this seed is not to be eaten. It's to be invested in the ground, to take a risk, cared for in the summer, harvested and multiplied in the fall. That's it. Now, the same is true of some of your money. If you set aside, and I suggest, part of your capital should be set aside for an enterprise to show a profit. So 10 cents to show a profit. Now, here's the other 10 cents. It's 10 cents that you invest and let someone else use it. This is called active capital where you actually engage in the enterprise that makes a profit. Now, another 10 cents is for passive capital, where you let someone use this 10 cents out of every dollar. You put it in a bank that pays interest. They use it and they pay you for the use of this money. That's called passive capital. So we've got active capital and passive capital. Maybe you invest this in a stock, eventually, if you have enough money. And the stock pays you dividends. And also, there may be an increase in the value of the stock. So this is the little formula I come up with. 70, 10, 10, and 10. It's very simple. Now, when you first start, if you're an adult now, you may be in such bad shape financially that you couldn't do the 70, 10, 10, and 10. If you're in real bad shape, you may have to do the 97, 1, 1, and 1. Because it may take this to pay your bills. If you haven't had a good plan up until now. But jot this down now. It's not the amount that counts. It's the plan that counts.